Okay, I just wanted to make a very brief video maybe about this paper that I just found and it's a very simple idea. Um, it's called Code, code L Lutra Boosting LM Code Generation via Preference Guided Refinement and um, the core thing that I just noticed was that on a challenging data science coding task using just 500 samples improved DAMA 3 AP accuracy from 28% to 48% approaching GPT 4's performance. And um, the general setup is code generation. So you have some question that's described in natural language and you then want the model to generate some code that fulfills some kind of test, some unit test. So you have like ground truth um, information and a lot of different approaches have been tried where you generate different samples um, and you try to somehow train it, but um, the core of this is this idea is that you want to leverage both successful and failed code generation attempts and it sounds very fancy but i'll just go down to the description of the method which is here so you start with an initial base model this would be llama 3b and you have an initial training data set where X is the natural language query and Y is the corresponding ground truth code solution. Then you um, have these iterations where we're trying to improve upon the initial base model and make it better. And the way we're doing it is that we're starting now in the first iteration. We have these, cur uh, these questions, natural language questions here and we for each of the questions we generate m attempts great then um, we try to execute the attempt and see whether it works or not so there we group them into correct and rejected and now one option we could do um, would be to just train on the correct ones using cross entropy loss and this would uh, then yield a new model and we could then try again this would be traditional expert iteration but now here we are constructing a preference data set for this iteration so we have these two groups of codes um, but we have this data set of correct and incorrect versions so we have um, n times m attempts and then we can construct these pairs so for each input we can create k preference pairs by randomly pairing one correct code with one rejected code so if we have enough of um, these we can for each um, question each query natural language query give an example of one where it failed and one where it worked that's great so now we have a preference data set very similar to how you're doing our lhf and so on and then they are saying we could now do dpo direct policy optimization and uh, the problem here is that it diminishes the likelihood of um, both correct and rejected code during training and this is something that has been mentioned before uh, I've seen it in other work than this too but um, and then and this is why I think it's also a bit like they make it sound like it's a big new method but this is not new i at least saw it in some other paper where you just say we're going to try to optimize both we're going to keep some 
part of the loss that is not just DPO, we're going to keep both. So we have two terms now in the loss function. We have the DPO loss and we have the likelihood loss. So direct policy optimization, we are trying to maximize this. What is this? This is the log of the sigmoid uh, of a scalar value that compares two things. We have the current model evaluated on the correct sample. And then we have the model that we want to optimize evaluated on the correct sample given the query. So this value we want to increase. We want there to be a relative increase in the likelihood of the correct sample and a relative decrease in the likelihood of a negative sample. Uh, sorry, like the increase in this should we, we should subtract and therefore we get a score that we want to kind of um, maximize. Um, I just wonder like why we have the minus signs here. Um, so we have log. Yeah, we're trying to maximize we're, and therefore we're minimizing it and therefore we have minus and minus here. And this is the standard uh, uh, SFT loss or cross entropy loss and that can be done for all the tokens and that's on the correct, correct solutions. Um, and that is basically it. Then they can conduct some experiments where I wonder why they use specifically these data query and data science tasks. I do not know these data sets, but I think it would be interesting to see how it works out with other well-known um, data sets like code contests or other competitive programming things. This would probably be the main limitation. Of course, it's good to have this and like it's good to have this focus on specific things, but I think especially when you're presenting your method as this like general method, even though it's um, so generic and as far as I know, not completely novel, then I think I would rather have preferred that you view it as an analysis of this thing. Like when does this work? Does it work well for specifically code versus uh, reasoning chains that you can also verify um, proofs in lean um, whatever so that's something and then um, I think it's of course very good that they are able to do this stuff with 3 billion no sorry it's not 3b it's 8b 8b parameters um, and I just, an academic lab or whatever they are here, it's good that just make cool stuff work with AP, but we still kind of want to know how this scales. Can, um, yeah, I feel like there's often a, like a level of abstraction that is missing. You're trying to see how well it works for this specific example, just as you would not show um, the results of your method by just showing how it performs on a single assembly but would aggregate it into these kind of general plots where you're averaging over the benchmark. In a similar way, you don't want to show the examples just on, like the results just on a single model, um, even though they say it also works well for um, other uh, models. They say at least yeah, they have Oh, they have something here or what? Yeah, 
and maybe I have to look a bit more on the results. It's still not uh, sufficiently like we want to know how well does it scale can this mod can this approach also be applied on to gpt4 itself and improve that even more or are we like reaching some diminishing returns by that or like strong diminishing di returns by that point and so on um yeah so not just keep it that was what i was looking for gamma 7b and start coder 7b they're the same size we want to know like how does it scale with data and so on. Um, but yeah, so it's very simple. The core of it is just this idea here. Take the data, data set, generate examples, tr group them by the correctness, create a preference data set, train using DPO loss and um, supervise fine tuning loss. And something else that's uh, not part here uh, of this thing is um, multi-turn stuff so ideally we have a lot of um, not ideally we have we have a lot of tasks where we cannot just solve these things in one go and we want to explore more methods that um, look at refinement and um, reinforcement and so on of setups where you take some action, you gener you get uh, some execution feedback or whatever, and then you take another action, um, not necessarily just like a refinement, but also just like a different kind of action in a multi-step way. And here that setup might be too simple, maybe it's not, but we just need to know.